They may just seem like beeps and clicks, but they can destroy the game before the player even gets started. This week, we're going to take a look at menu sounds. So in this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, in the past, we've taken a look at uh, actually creating the sounds. And for this video, I wanted to talk about actually using the sounds. And the inspiration for this video actually came from a game that I was playing on Steam the other day, where uh, it was supposed to be this 3D horror escape type game. And the music and the sound effects in the main menu made it sound as if I was about to start playing uh, like a 2D side scroller, endless runner type game. I was just real upbeat and 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 kind of poppy, and it it didn't fit the game at all. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to actually create a couple different menu uh, types, just like you guys saw at the beginning of this video, and um, and just kind of show how the different how different sounds can affect uh, the immersiveness of your game. So I jumped into Unreal Engine, and I'm not an Unreal Engine master, by the way. Um, been using it for a couple years, though. So I wanted to kind of put together a couple menus. And the first one I made, I was just kind of playing around with this beach setting. Uh, I had a waterfall. Uh, as you can see, it's just a stage that's set up. And so we can create a menu and, and just kind of see how the different settings for different games uh, call for different types of sounds. So for this one, what I did was I uh, I pulled in uh, some forest sounds. I wanted to have the menu kind of have an ambience to it. Um, so you'll hear kind of a, a forest sound as well as the waterfall and some waves. I did create a little bit of music, but I wanted to take a look at just how overall aesthetics, visuals, and sound all come together to create that immersive experience for the player. So what I did was I set up the scene and then I came in here and made a menu widget. And the way I made the menu widget was I didn't put any sort of background in here. That way you could actually see uh, how I had the camera set up. And it just kind of gives us a nice overlay uh, on top of uh, the video. But we had come in here and uh, I put some sounds in. I set them up so that every time you hover over a button, it makes one sound. And then when you click on a button, it makes a different sound. Uh, I didn't add a button sound, a click sound to the quit game because you're quitting the game and you're not going to hear it anyway. So I'm going to play this for you uh, and then we can kind of talk about it a little bit more. So you can hear with the music, um, I wanted something to kind of give you that feeling that you were out on the beach. Uh, the UI sounds, um, again, I only did the, the mouse over and the select. You can go deep into the sounds for your UI. But I wanted something that if you were selecting between uh, different menu options, the sounds wouldn't get super annoying. So I wanted just something real subtle uh, to kind of make it pop and click. So for this next one, um, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, horror is my favorite genre of movie, video game, sound effect. Uh, so I did kind of want to set up something kind of mysterious and eerie. And uh, so I built this hallway. And as I was playing around with it, like I had no intentions of calling it Red Room. Um, I just happened to throw a light behind this door and was playing around with some different colors and I like the way the red shine through and so we went from there uh, but again it's literally just a hallway that I built and so for the sounds of this again with as far as music goes uh, it's literally two notes 
uh, just alternating back and forth at a really slow tempo. The menu mouse overs and selections I wanted kind of a, a breathy, eerie sound. So we'll go ahead and check that out. So if if I'm being completely honest, the music could probably come down a little bit. Uh, in the options menus, I, I haven't implemented any sort of uh, volume faders because these menus aren't actually going to be used for anything. So I wasn't worried about making them completely functional. In contrast to uh, the falls that we were just looking at, you can tell how just the music alone helps set the tone and helps drive that immersive level. With immersive levels, especially in horror games, uh, suspense is a, a big thing. How your player feels before they even get into the game is super important. Uh, because if they're annoyed in the main menu, that's going to completely destroy the immersive level going into the game. They're not going to have as much fun. And for the game that I was playing on Steam, it kind of had this feeling visually, but Sonically, it actually sounds like the next menu that we're going to take a look at. So for this level setup, um, I didn't actually design this one. Uh, the other two I designed, this one was actually uh, just kind of the sample map for uh, an asset pack that I picked up. And it's just kind of a, a space station looking area, kind of in a frozen planet type environment. As far as the music goes, um, again, I'm not a composer. It's probably the most active song out of the three for the menus that we've created. And then for our mouse overs and selective sounds, you know, I wanted to go with a, a kind of a technology feel. So they're, they're very digital. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. <laughs> So you can hear uh, how it is more of a, a space-esque game. And uh, after listening to it just now, um, I probably could have pulled the, the mouse over sounds back a little bit as well. And these are all things that you'll find once you actually get into the visuals. Uh, you can kind of see how it all comes together and then you can adjust your mix how that needs to be. But as far as creating all these sounds, Having that visual definitely helps as far as knowing exactly where your sounds are, are going to go. Uh, as I mentioned, that the other game that I played, um, it sounded like they, they just kind of pulled sounds or they had a sound designer and they were like, hey, create some UI sounds. And they're like, here you go. And, and they didn't really fit. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of how sounds that aren't really meant for your game visually can really affect um, the overall immersiveness of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the sounds from this space station and I'm gonna put them over top the, the creepy hallway. And so that way you guys can kind of see how the sounds that aren't meant for that area can really destroy the immersiveness for that area. All right, so we're back in the red room hallway, and what I've done is I've went ahead and, and replaced all of the sounds that were originally in this hallway, uh, again, with the the sounds from the, the Galaxy Station area that we created. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how those sounds on top of this can just completely destroy the area. So you can see right away that having sounds that don't fit uh, what you're seeing visually can have an adverse effect on everything that you're creating and completely remove your player from that experience. 
All right, so that's going to do it for this week's video. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in and hanging out. Uh, you'll still be able to get all the sounds that I used for these different menus. Uh, there will be a link in the description below. So if you guys have ever played a game that has a really terrible UI sound, uh, feel free to drop that in the comments. I'd love to check those out. As always, if you'd like to see anything specific in these videos, please feel free to let me know. Uh, you can post that in the comments as well, or you can contact me on any one of these social medias. Until next time.